paper. This is the 2015 paper. This is the question four and the restricted answer. Okay, up to 10% of perfumes sold in the UK are counterfeit versions of brand name perfumes. One way to identify if a perfume is counterfeit is to use ga gas chromatography. Shown below are gas chromatograms from a brand name perfume and two different counterfeits. Some of the peaks in the brand name perfume have been identified as belonging to particular compounds. Nice little picture. We've got retention time running along this way and we've got our different peaks so points where we've got different elements that have been, sorry, different compounds that have been dropped out of the uh, chromatogram. Counterfeit A and counterfeit B pictures. Okay, identify one compound present in the brand name perfume that appears in both counterfeit perfumes. Okay, so this one uh, we have definitely got B and we've definitely got C and oh, it's got A as well and E. Okay, looking at the next one down, it's also got E, it's got B and it's got C, it doesn't have A and it's also got a high pe a peak at the end here for G. So you're being asked to name B, C or E. And when we look back up here, that means you need to write down the word citronello and get the mark. Or you could have gone with geraniol and get the mark. Or you could have gone with anisyl alcohol and got the mark because it just says give one. Some compounds in the brand name perfume are not found in the counterfeits. State another difference that the chromatograms show between the counterfeit and the brand name. So not just about what's not there. Okay. Um, so what you've got to look at is obviously the retention times are the same because it's the same compounds. The only other thing we have a difference of is the peak in the chromatogram. So what the peaks mean is that you have smaller concentrations of each of these compounds in the counterfeits than you do in the original. Okay, so another difference between that the chromatograms show, so we're not seeing a statement about the chromatograms, we're seeing what it actually means. What it means is that you have lower concentrations of the compound. be careful on that one okay that it's not just about the the size of the peaks the gas used to carry the perfume sample along the chromatography column is helium suggest why helium is used basically helium is unreactive okay we have a, a noble gas which means that it's inert and it won't actually react with anything else which is what you want Apart from polarity of molecules state another factor that would affect the retention time of molecules during grass chromatography um, freely admit that I just I, I was like mass that's fine and then I went and checked the mark scheme on this one and they'd also accepted temperature which since temperature affects solubility that's fair enough that's a totally reasonable one but I didn't think of it straight away but mass and polarity are the two that you're expected to know anyway Many of the compounds in perfumes are molecules assist, consisted of joined isoprene units. State the name that is given to molecules consisting of joined isoprene units. That's just a terpene, straight, KU. Garanol is one of the compounds found in perfume. It has following structural formula and systematic name. Linalool can also, or linalool, must be all at the end. Anyway, doesn't matter. Structural formula is shown. Say it's systematic name for. Okay, so they've giving you quite a lot of hints by giving you the structure up here um, to make sure that you can kind of stick to the same setup okay so just use your standard rules so I want the longest chain I want to number with the functional group it's pretty much it okay so my longest chain here is oh, straight through the middle and it's the same as the one above, so it's an oct. It shows you here that you should write octa. Okay, I have two double bonds. So I've got the diene bit. And I've also got an alcohol here, so I've got the all bit as well. So I'm going to go back and add the numbers, obviously. And then I'm looking for my extra substituent groups. So here we go. I have two methyls, so it's a dimethyl, exactly what it's got up here. And I need numbers, so let's start with putting in the OH, just because that's a single one, that's three all, because this is carbon one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Our diene is, oh, I just realized I didn't put the E in there. Diene, there we go. Um, our diene is on carbon one and carbon six. So one comma six. And our methyl groups are on three and seven. So three comma seven dash. Okay, and that's it. Explain why I can't say it, so we're just going to leave it. it. can be classified as a tertiary alcohol. So this is just a definition. Tertiary alcohol means that you have alcohol, can't spell it. Okay, it means that you have the hydroxyl group attached to the carbon and then that carbon connects to can't spell today, connects to three other carbons. Okay, so you have, there's your OH group, here's the carbon that's attached to this, there's going to be a carbon, another carbon, and another carbon. If it was a secondary, just to remind, okay, then you would have the OH, you would have a carbon group off here, carbon group off here, but this would just be a hydrogen, and if it was a primary, then we would have the carbon with just one carbon group attached, that would be a hydrogen, that would be a hydrogen. Actually, this could even be a hydrogen as well, it could be methanol. Okay. Oh, there we go. This is the last yet, last bit of it. Cumarin is another compound found in the brand name perfume. It is present in the spice cinnamon and can be taught harmful if eaten in large quantities. European Food Safety Age Authority, not agency, gives a tolerable daily intake of cumarin at 0.1 mg per kilogram of body weight. One kilogram of cinnamon powder from a particular source contains 4.4 grams of cumarin. Calculate the mass of cinnamon powder in grams which would need to be consumed by an adult weighing 75 kilograms to reach the tolerable daily intake. Okay, this looks like a lot, but if you just don't panic, it's not too bad. Okay, I'm going to start by saying I've got a 75 kilogram adult, which means from up here, I would need 75 times 0 0.1 megs to work out what their tolerance level could be, which is going to be 7.5 milligrams okay which since i'm going to have to calculate this in grams i'm going to shift this into grams and so i'm going to change it to 0 0.0075 grams now you can get all of these um multipliers at the back of your data book you know gives you mix to to grams to kilograms all of this stuff okay so this is actually what the tolerable limit is so I'm trying to work out how much of that um, I have. Okay, so 4.4 grams of Kumarin, I would find in 1,000 grams, because it wants me to give it in grams, so I'm going to convert that kilograms to grams, of my cinnamon powder. Oh, cinnamon powder. Okay. So if I want 0 0.0075, I'm just going to do another proportion. So this one divided by 4.4 times by 1,000 would give me 1.7 grams. There's your answer, two marks.